Hello students, my name is Santosh Kumar and I am the course instructor of Machining Sciences and Tool Design. We are in module 1 that is Metal Cutting Theory and Dynamometry and we are discussing Merchant's Force Circle in this video. First, we need to understand what, is the, what are the forces in cutting. So, why do we need to understand the cutting forces? One is for the estimation of cutting power consumption. That is, once you know how much power is consumed, is getting consumed, so you can find out what is the power source required power source required for the to run the machine tool that is HP of a motor and then the structural design that is how rigid should be your fixtures and tool system and then evaluation of role of machine parameters on forces. To do this we make certain assumptions like work moves with a uniform velocity actually it may not be so the tool is perfectly sharp and there is no contact along the clearance phase. There is no sideways flow of chip. Width of the tool is greater than the width of the work. A continuous chip is produced without any built up edge. But actually there may be a built up edge and cutting forces may vary. And these are the forces in machining. First. We have a shear force which is acting along the shear plane which is represented as Fs in this figure and then perpendicular to it we have a backing up force exerted by the workpiece on chip. You have a normal force which is perpendicular to the frictional force and then the frictional force along the tool rake face and then mu which is reciprocal of which is a, a ratio of frictional force and normal force. So that is coefficient of friction between tool phase and the chip. Next we have a FT that is feed force or a thrust force. This force is uh, also generated by uh, holding the cutting tool and then you have a radial force which is not represented in this figure because this one is 2D that is uh, orthogonal cutting but in case of oblique cutting there is a radial force is also present and then you have a FC that is the cutting force. So now let us understand how to draw the merchant circle diagram. So let us take a cutting tool striking the workpiece. So this is the cutting tool and this is uncut chip thickness and this is the shear plane. So here we have a shear force Fs which we discussed and then along the tool face we have a normal sorry frictional force. So I will draw a friction force of certain magnitude and then perpendicular to it we have a normal force. I will join this two forces I will get a resultant force and then I will draw perpendicular to the shear force and parallel to the friction force. that is backup force Fn. Now I will take this resultant force center of this line and take this as a radius draw a circle to get a merchant circle which is used to analyze the cutting forces. So I will get one more force here that is Ft and then that is thrust force and then Fc that is cutting force. 
So this is how you can draw a merchant circle and you will get a merchant circle like this. Okay. So now we will start analyzing the forces involved in the merchant circle. So first we will take FC, FT. Okay. So this angle is tau minus alpha because we have tau here, this is tau and this is 90. So here we get 180 minus 90 plus tau that we will will get 90 plus tau. So 90 minus tau and this as this angle is alpha that is rake angle and this angle is 90 minus tau the what we get is this angle which is tau minus alpha. So now we are considering this triangle. So we will consider sin of this angle that is sin of tau minus alpha as sin angle is opposite by hypotenuse opposite is ft and then hypotenuse is r. So we get ft will be equal to r sin tau minus alpha. I will take it as equation 1. Similarly, cos of tau minus alpha will be equal to adjacent by hypotenuse that is fc by r. So fc will be equal to r cos tau minus alpha. I will take it as equation 2. Now let us take one more triangle in the merchant circle. Fc that is shear force and then backup force. As this angle is phi that is shear angle and this angle is tau minus alpha that is by previous slide you came to know that. So total angle will be equal to phi plus tau minus alpha. Now using cos phi plus tau minus alpha that is adjacent by yeah, that is adjacent by hypotenuse that is fs by r so we get fs will be equal to r cos phi plus tau minus alpha similarly sin of this angle sin of phi plus tau minus alpha will be equal to opposite by adjacent opposite by hypotenuse that is we will get fn will be equal to r sin phi plus tau minus alpha i will take it as equation 4 now let us take one more triangle that is friction force and normal force and this one is tau and this is normal to friction that is why it is 90. Sin of tau is f by r opposite by hypotenuse f will be equal to r sin tau cos tau will be equal to n by r n will be equal to r cos tau I will take it as equation 5 and 6. Now using equation 3, I am rewriting the equation 3, fs will be equal to r cos phi plus tau minus alpha. So I will take this term as a and this term as b. I can write using a compound angle cos a plus b will be equal to cos a cos b minus sin a sin b. So rewriting. I will get this equation. Again, I will rearrange the equation. I will write it in this form. From 1 and 2, that is, Ft will be equal to R sin tau minus alpha and Fc will be equal to R cos tau minus alpha. Instead of R, I substitute here R, sorry, Fc cos tau minus alpha, cos tau minus alpha, cos tau minus alpha get cancelled. So what remains is Fc cos phi. Similarly here instead of R, I substitute Ft by sin tau minus alpha. So I get minus Ft sin phi. Okay. So this is the equation for shear force.
similarly using equation 4 I write rewrite the equation 4 as fn r sin phi plus tau minus alpha I will take this one as a and this as b sin a plus b sin of a plus b that will be equal to sin a cos b plus cos a sin b. So, I will rearrange in the equation I will get fn will be equal to r cos tau minus alpha sin phi plus r sin tau minus alpha cos phi. Again instead of r I write it as fc cos tau minus alpha here ft sin tau minus alpha ft by sin tau minus alpha. So, what I get is equation for normal force that is fc sin phi plus ft cos phi. Again using equation re rewriting the equation phi f is equal to r sin tau. I can write this equation also in the form I just add and subtract alpha to this. So, I will take this one as a and this one as b sin a plus b formula sin of a plus b formula so then i'll i'll get a equation like this and again rearranging i'll get a equation like this from again instead of r using equation 1 and 2 i'll substitute instead of r here fc by cos tau minus alpha and here ft by sin tau minus alpha so i'll get equation for friction force. Similarly using equation 4, equation 6 I can write n is equal to r cos tau. I will add and subtract alpha. So, I will get a I will take this one as a and this one as b cos a plus b that will be cos of a plus b that will be equal to cos a cos b cos a cos b minus sin a sin b. So, rearranging the equation I can write it in this form. Again instead of r I can like substitute equation 1 and 2 I will be getting equation for normal force. Okay, So, I got equation for shear force, backup force, friction force and then normal force. So, using equation 9 and 10 that is equation of friction force and normal force I can write it in this form that will be equal to phi. So, dividing the numerator and denominator by cos alpha. So, what I get is that is here divided by cos alpha and again here divided by cos alpha. So, cos alpha cos alpha gets cancelled I get ft plus fc tan alpha similarly in denominator also. So, finally I will get equation as f by n will be equal to tan tau that will be equal to mu. Okay. So, this is the equations for uh, the, all the forces which is involved in the Machen circle diagram. So, if you take the oblique cutting there is one more force which is getting added up. So, previously what we discussed is for orthogonal cutting in this there is one more force which is getting added up along with the feed force and cutting force you have one more force that is radial force which needs to be considered. So, therefore, in orthogonal cutting FR is 0. So, the resultant force what we were getting is Fc square plus Ft square. Whereas in oblique cutting there is one more force that is radial force getting added up. So, resultant force will be square root of Fc square plus Ft square plus Fr square. So, you cannot use do analysis to get these forces. You can directly use the dynamometers because oblique uh, cutting analysis is quite difficult. So, you can directly use dynamometer to get the get these forces and also the resultant force. So, we will end this